Okay, so today I'm going to be continuing my descent into madness by playing my two least favorite colors, obviously, in the game. But I did something interesting the other day. So for my last Saturday format, uh, I played Magic the Gathering online for the first time ever. And so that's like a more manual one. Maybe I'll show it here at the end of the episode. But I almost want to try to fit those into here, but it's going to be impossible because of how short these sessions already are. Right, and I kind of like, you know, still continuing this and building up my collection and stuff like that. But it was basically very similar to this in the sense of I was worried it might not be automated, right? <clears throat> Where you'd have to do everything manually, kind of like the old school Yu-Gi-Oh simulators that I would play like uh, Kaiba Core Virtual Duel System and stuff like that. But I never get this bonus either. I should buy at least 10 packs during the course of the expansion, but I, instead I wasted on stupid cosmetics, like the ones that has the tax lines like Yeehaw and stuff whatever stupid you know things like that at least they should voice act them somehow but you know there is a certain amount of voice acting in the game but it's all relegated just to the uh to the planeswalkers themselves but no it's basically a case where i was able to um that it, i thought i was worried it might be aut like not automated where you have to manually do everything like in the old school Yu-Gi-Oh simulators like you'd have to manually subtract your life points and you know they would declare their attack and everything was like very man you know manual kind of like on hands-on with respect to how almost how you do it in real life when will this game end i'm not really sure and even if it does like i'm talking about the other version of the game i'd probably play some other uh other version of it still but yeah it's like I guess Hearthstone would end when the game actually goes offline. Like if any of these do, but I kind of doubt they will because they're so popular. But although Hearthstone, I wouldn't have expected to have lasted this long anyway. Just in terms of, you know, it being online for so long and being so popular. As much as I even like it. So, yeah, when will chess end? When will people finally get bored of that? When Chess 960 takes over. Oh, that's fine. How's it going? <clears throat> so latest what, what was i saying oh yeah the magic online so yeah generally it was pretty good it was automated for the most part like uh i don't know if that's something maybe they added as a functionality later like it's been around for a long time so maybe it wasn't at first and you did have to do everything manually or maybe it is like an official one though that's why i keep comparing it to these fan-made simulators like whatever kaiba corp and some other ones for Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff but it's actually an official one by the company itself who owns the game so it's not like you know a fan had to put it together and that's why it has to be uh manual but yeah maybe i'll show that off the, at the end here a little bit but we'll still play these kind of garbage ones and at least there i was using it as a guilty pleasure excuse to play as green again right because of how obsessed i am with green but i'm not allowing myself to play it here and i did say i might try to do a 10k draft again before this expansion is over but oh apply for the army nice Uh, when does this expansion actually end? Because... Like, doesn't it say, like, normally how many days are left in the thing? Or maybe it only does that when there's, like, only 30 days left. I thought it always said it on that page. So the last two expansions, I haven't been too interested in trying to get the roar track stuff, right? Just, there's nothing that really stood out with the little orbs and the avatars and stuff like that. So... Yeah, I might try to fit that into these sessions, but I don't really have a dedicated series for it yet. It's just kind of an interesting way to see the game in a different form. Or actually, I could use it as a benchmark too to see like there was a card that was really cool, like the Orb of Resistance. So that kind of fits with my whole desire to cock my ability of opponents to play stuff. So uh, let's see if that's actually something you can have. So there might have been some older cards mixed in there. I wouldn't even be too aware of whether that's the case. So I guess it's not in this game, which is weird, right? So that must be a super old card that you wouldn't get to see here in any form. Or sometimes it won't show you like all the legacy cards here either. Like it should be all sets by default though. Like I'm always looking at timeless or historic, but yeah, it, it definitely that's what I was craving. Is like, I want to do a time walk and go and play the oldest cards in the history of the game. I don't want to just play the newest ones and the most recent expansions and whatever, which is kind of what I do here anyway, but there might be some that aren't in this game that are in that one. So that's between the two, you should have every card in the history of the game. Or maybe that version does have every card in the history of the game because we did see some cards that were new, like, you know, some of the same ones I have in my collection here, 
But no, that'll be a guilty pleasure excuse to play green <laughs> again. In the only form that maybe I'm allowed to. Hope you've been doing well. Okay, see you later. Yeah, express yourself your, with, to your opponent using emotes and stickers that don't actually have voice lines or anything like that. Like, like Hearthstone really puts it to shame from that presentation standpoint to the extent that, you know, not only do they have voice lines, but they have like, literally hundreds of fucking avatars, each with like six unique voice lines and they all interact with each other. Like if the characters know each other from the lore, they'll have like lines to say specific to that, like how in League of Legends they have that, where like certain characters are from the same universe in lore and like they have like a back and forth banter that they say like oh it's you you're the you know nurzul had that line yesterday like talking to the lich king i've seen you in my visions even though you're literally me even if that's supposed to be arthas you know it's supposed to be both of them the queue times have been a little bit longer lately i actually don't know why maybe it's something to do with the timeless mode but see i have beaten people in this mode still i could say like i'll go until i lose a set and then i'll play the other version but That'll probably be the first fucking game. But yeah, that was always cool to take a look at. And like I said, I'd want to go out of my way to try to use the oldest cards possible there. Just to sort of embrace that element. I barely did anything. I just kind of looked at how it worked and played like two or three games. I don't understand exactly how the business model works there because it's still like a microtransaction based experience. But there was nothing on the shop. There was nothing like... I don't know how to explain it. Like, like there was this one thing on the shop and it was just like a $4.99 thing uh, to, you know, like your starter pack. But there was nothing, there were no actual packs. So what if I just wanted to buy even for real money, which I'm not going to do. So the only way seemingly to get packs was like, you know, oh, you have to play it, buy into a tournament kind of thing, right? Some sort of draft or some event. And then if you win like five games in that, you get like a pack or something from there. <clears throat> but no, it, it does have like a lot of newer cards. So I was playing in like the legacy mode, of course, as whenever I play these games for the first time, I always play the old school formats, which people always tell me not to do. Like, oh, you should play standard. But I think people miss what the whole point of that is. If you've never experienced the game in any form, why would you want to go into the newest cards with the newest mechanics? and power creep why not experience the base mechanics in the most you know old school raw sense possible and the reason why you would do that is because that's still fresh and new to you too so people are taking for granted oh just play the new stuff but that's more like a business incentive that oh the the company wants you to buy the newest cards but if it's just you you know for your experience you you've missed out on all that I would never say that like with Yu-Gi-Oh, even if I'm jaded to it a little bit, like I played the old school stuff for so long, I would never say, oh, just skip ahead and do Synchro, mainly because Synchro sucks as a mechanic, but even if it didn't, or even like in Hearthstone, don't just play the new stuff, go back and play all the fun cards and mechanics that everybody else maybe takes for granted. Yeah, this was meant to be like an invisible stalker OTK type thing, all this unpreventable damage, especially assuming if they don't have flying stuff to block all these. Uh, you know, flying ward, flying hexproof, all these things that make them very hard to get rid of. See, I almost have lethal. Even if they hit me with everything here, I would be too damage short of lethal next turn. But then I'll still end up dying because... 2, 4, 5, 6... It's a difference of like one turn that I can't seem to do. Or now I'm gonna get completely fleeced. It's funny how close you can get though. And it's always a mockery of the how low the starting health value is. Right, this game has the lowest starting health value of any game, like equal to PvZ Heroes. Imagine that, a casual clicker game. And then Hearthstone has the lowest deck count. I guess commensurate to almost duel, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, where it only has 20 cards. But that's almost as a mockery of, you know, this is some overly simplified, casualized type of game. Uh, and it's like... You know, that, that has 30, 20 cards, and then Hearthstone only has 30 cards. So both of those seem kind of casualized, even again, compared to PvZ Heroes. I'll use that to constantly clown everybody. Imagine having less health, or the same health as that game, or imagine having fewer cards than that game. It would have been a difference of just like one turn, though, and I'm still not necessarily dead, though. I have 12. How did they take so much damage at the beginning? 
they did some card themselves that must have hurt them. I wasn't even like paying attention. But no, at least that game didn't have a shitty four hour tutorial like this one. My principal, like I I was shitting all over the tutorial in this game. I mean, it took me four hours, maybe because I'm a clown, but I just don't find that interesting to play against the AI and stuff. Like I'd rather get my ass beat online by another person than by an AI. Right, if I want to get spanked, at least let me have some human interaction in the process. But no, it's basically like, I really don't like the tutorials in these kind of games and how long it was. That one didn't even really have one at all. Just a little bit of text to read and generally it's not too bad. So this would be a perfect kill if they don't have anything else to play. Oh, fuck off. That was a good bait though, at least. Because if, if they had done that first, then I would have known to block something and then it might not have worked. So <laughs> that's a pretty good sequence. Yeah, there was nothing about their deck that really seemed too intimidating or too good. There's almost some kind of weird camouflage thing. Her backside is so big that it almost looks like it blends in with the rocks a little bit. If it was like the same color. Like, oh, that's not part of her avatar. That's just part of the, the background with the Grand Canyon, you know, type shit that we have. Yeah, this game hardly has any less voice acting than that one. Because obviously... That, that one had like certain audio design to it where there would be sounds and stuff like that. But no, I could care less about that. Look, look how it blocks my... I'm getting photobond by her... Whatever, her legs and stuff. <laughs> like, why should her avatar supersede mine? Okay, this is not the greatest hand, but I mean, I just gotta go with what I got here. It's amazing how well this works though, right? This deck is so shitty and so limited in scope, but I was still almost able to finish them off. I was like two damage short if I had just... You know... It's just so easy to do that sometimes. Despite the whole mechanic of blocking, if you can just subvert it as much as you want. What is this picture from? So many of these weird crossovers and other universes that the game borrows from. You can equip this to a creature, you get plus two, plus one, and ward. Which is not really even worth it. Some of these effects for the buffs are just way too expensive, like even equipping something to them. Right, it's so expensive. You have to play it for three, then you have to use another three to put it on something, like... <clears throat> yeah, I could almost treat it like that. Like, I'll play this until I lose a game, or lose a set, and then I'll play that game, and then I'll keep rotating back and forth. And I wouldn't even have to change the category, because they're both Magic the Gathering, and there's only one Magic category for whatever reason. It's like... You know... This is a card that I genuinely like to use even in my green deck because of the simple fact that, you know, they, they would sit there with like a bunch of stuff, you know, just holding it back, holding it back, or like a bunch of flying stuff that I couldn't block or whatever. So it just forces them to play like a man on the board like I always do, like with my whatever. Are you serious? Fuck. I feel like I was in an okay position, but now I'm getting mana screwed. That happened in that game, too. But no, I didn't have a Gigantosaurus or anything, so it was a little bit lonely, even though I got to play as green. Right, it wasn't quite the same, but... I almost shouldn't play as green, because then, you know, give myself some variety. I should try to play as black or red, but... I'll play as kind of everything, but... At least in this version, I'm making a point not to play green, probably for a while. Why does this happen so consistently every fucking time? Like, I have enough lands in my decks, right? Whether it be white land, blue land, it doesn't matter for the most part. Because you only need, like, one of the color, you know, one of the specific color for most of these. Just, like, one or two. And I don't mind paying that price of, like, oh, you have to pay five green for this one guy. Like, again, to Soros, because it's worth it. Like, give me every card like that, then. I pay only one mana color, but the, the value of it is doubled, like... Um... Yeah, the whole appeal of that is to at least give the impression of playing an older version of a game. Right, where you get to play in like an earlier state, which again, even if you can theoretically do this here like with... You know, you can do this... I think it lets you play stuff incorrectly like that. Like if you don't have enough to pay the ward cost, it'll still let you play it and waste the card, right? It won't like cancel the interaction. Not that I would have ever made a mistake like that, but okay, we just got cucked in the beginning here on the mana.
Yeah, maybe arguably I should have even played that version first, but I guess this one didn't hurt the experience. So this will be a good buff, but maybe I should have waited, but I'm trying to get something flying out there, and these are not the greatest value sort of plays. Okay, I'm going to have to block something at some point. No, the best way to start is you just you summon the Invisible Stalker, and they can't deal with it, and you keep buffing it and just keep hitting them every turn. Even if it's not going to be an Invisible Stalker OTK, it's going to be... Um, you know, it's going to be a case where you are going to chip away, but now their board is just going to be too much, so there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I could do this, and it's such a good blocking target, but, you know, 5 mana 2-5 is so shitty. And again, some of these effects that you're getting are so dumb, like, what, I'm going to empty my deck and it becomes a 10-10. Like, these games aren't going to last that long. I'm not, not a big fan of mill. I'm not a big fan of ton of removal. So all these kind of things that blue encapsulates. I'm not a fan of healing the way that... Uh... You know, white is all about healing and buffing. I'm not a big fan of that. The one form of healing that I could be a fan of is like on the board. Like if I have a 10-10 and it goes down to five health after they use like some removal on it, or, or you know, they try to trade into it, then I want to heal it up back to 10, but I can't even do that because this game just auto heals everything. Like what were some of the major differences with the mechanics in that? Like stuff still does auto heal. I feel like not too much was actually that different. I don't think I saw anybody really play a Planeswalker. Okay, the point is we're going to lose, but I'll let them play it out. Or yeah, I didn't get to see whether the, the minions shrink down like this. Whether you can have this many infinite amount. Okay, we get it, dude. Why, why do you have to do it manually? Why not just hit attack with everything? He's going like one by one. I always love how this game lets you BM your opponent like that by over killing them by, you know, it'll make you sit there and watch every single extra hit even though you were already dead. Yeah, I won't do it by that criteria because as much as I'd like to not play as blue and white, I still, uh, you know, this is still meant to be this series and, you know, because we're still working towards building our collection, things like that, but that's still like an unofficial series for now, but it was at least nice to try it. And there might be even other versions of the game beyond that. But I imagine these are like the main two that people play. And th this probably seems more popular still. But for people who are old school players or try hard players or whatever, they might find that more interesting too. But even I find it interesting, even though I don't know what I'm doing because... Whatever, but it it's weird how... It doesn't even show you like how you get packs or anything unless it's like hidden away somehow or unless you have to buy that 499 thing first before it shows you that because aside from like playing in certain events and stuff it, i thought maybe it would just be a straight up simulator game where you could just play use any card in the game and you don't have to worry about building up your collection like in this but you still do right those are sometimes the best just it's like a fan-made simulator where you can just use the use the card image any card image in the history of the game and that's all like see, this would be pretty good for these but you know what? let me take a chance it's not like i've ever gotten mana screwed before it's amazing how often that happens where you'd almost question like you should have more lands in your deck but it's weird because i typically do i have at least like 20 in a 60 card deck or something like that this is a good value play, almost like it's a green card, but it comes at such a major expense. But then there is one interesting dynamic that, you know, even once it runs out, you can untap it for like, uh, you know, as a regular play, right? Once the three counters run out, you could just attack and do that too. You know, if we get these to actually stick and attack them, then I could pay that extra. So, so what you could do is like, how would that work like it's in the middle of the attack phase and i hit him and then i untap him and hit him again i don't think it would let you do that it's more like it would just uh oh shit i mean so you may as well just do that but it's not really worth it so you know, i can just get away with as much as we can here to chip away so if the game goes on for a long period of time but it just somehow won't less so in timeless than 
than historic right i could make probably the same exact deck in in historic i don't know what would be different we can just attack with both of these and again i could untap it so i should totally do that but what would be the best case just that i can block with it after the fact it'd be so cool if you could just attack again actually but you can't then you could almost do an OTK with that alone. Just keep doing it over and over during the same battle phase if you had enough mana and untap it like 10 times. But look at like the extent to which they're using all these kind of elaborate things and I'm just, you know, play on the board and just troll you with all this sort of unpreventable damage, which that even that's not really even my style, but now I could block that, right? It wouldn't even matter. The problem is they're just outfoxing me on the board too much. Everybody keeps doing that. Uh, put a plus one, plus one, target creature you control. I mean, we kind of just have to go for it, but they're just going to kill me pretty much right now. Uh, three, or I didn't have enough to untap that again. Yeah, this like there's too much shit going on with this that I can't possibly keep up. block one of them or I guess not and that was exactly enough okay neither of these decks have been too intimidating that I've gone against it's just like they actually have synergies and cohesive mechanics <laughs> instead of just raw random plays but I am committing to at least an idea right it'll make it seem cohesive like a theme you know like oh you know you have all hexproof or all ward and stuff like that I've been trying to get into ward more as much as I love hexproof but there's no point because it's just a worse version of it, right? Instead of specifying it to, oh, you have to pay X amount. You, so you would think they'd be much better value. Like they should be better statted or they should have better effects. But a lot of the time they're not. Like why not just get a hexproof minion that is just as good, but just it can't be targeted at all. It's just poor man's hexproof. Maybe, like, if I didn't have enough Hexproof to fit in there, but I could make, like, a 60-card deck with just only Hexproof minions, right? It's not like I have any trouble finding them. There aren't really enough, but I can always just, like, make four copies of them. And, yeah, I don't know what to what extent that game has uh, disenchanting and crafting and stuff like that. Right, I didn't really see anything like that. It starts you with a lot of cards, though. Like, I, I should look through how many cards I actually have in my collection here because I have, like, 2,000 there. Like, I'll compare them. I guess I could just keep them both open at the same time, too. Uh, put a plus one, plus one. Well, let me guess. They're going to do the same exact thing again that they just did. Just keep... Uh, I don't know why Thopter sounds like such a joke meme term. It, it sounds like something made up. Okay, this is fine. You go like that. So some we have some of the pseudo buff intention, but it's just not really going to work for me because you know, you, you gotta get on the invisible stalker or something with flying, assuming they don't have something with flying. Which a lot of people actually don't, especially in the early game. Right, where that can catch them off guard just as much. So this you can just block. Oh shit. This is not really too menacing of a board so far, unless he starts to get those buffs off. I guess we can kind of spread the love a little bit here. Right, you don't want to overcommit to one thing. He can block it with the stupid Thopter thing. Some of the types in the, the, this game are so specific. Like, it'll be, yeah, food golem. Like, how many food golems are there in the game? Fucking... Just don't buff anything. That's his only like win condition that he has. Affinity for artifacts. Fuck off. It's plus one plus one for each artifact creature you control. He was actually kind of having a weak start until that. And of course I'm never gonna have any way of dealing with it. Put a plus one plus one. Okay, so everything is pretty much spread out pretty well. And you could think, oh, we'll keep blocking, but I'm not going to be able to do anything if I do that. And they do have a decent amount of flying stuff, too, to block all my shit. Six mana, four, six. Archive Dragon. What is this? Seed the Scaleless? Like, the Duke's Archive? 
They copied Dark Souls. What the fuck, man? <laughs> or almost this is less valuable because you get to keep getting this buff every turn. Yeah, ni nice game. I was even saying, oh, he got off to a slow start also. Like, th this is taking a little bit too far. One 16-16 would have been good enough, but... Jesus Christ. I'm even making fun. Like, oh, this guy's deck doesn't seem all that good. And of course, they can block stuff there as well. Yeah, I want to compare what the number of cards I started that game with, basically. They give you like 2,000 right away. And, you know, five different starter packs and like a whole bunch of shit. Whereas here, you know, to get that many might be the total I've gotten over the course of like a year and a half of playing to whatever small extent that I do. Hey, Nightmare, how's it going? Yeah, obviously we're dead. I mean, this is like the kind of overkill that you see in these broken formats. But just to put in perspective that this guy's deck didn't seem all that good really until that happened. And that didn't happen the first game either, but he at least had some good buffs and everything. That's just where it takes it too far, right? You could win with just one of those, but you win like five times over just to show, you know, show off and troll. I don't even know why I kept that one or even this one I'm never going to do because I'm just using the same colors over and over. I always keep saying I want to do 10 k two 10k drafts within the course of an expansion, but then I never do. But I still don't think I have for a single one. And for the first long while, I was never even doing the 10k draft at all. Right? Whereas lately, I've been making it a routine to at least do one as soon as the new expansion comes out. Which I don't even know exactly when this one did come out. But it's still got a while before the next one. Yeah, I should be so skilled that I can multi-box and play both versions of the game at once, but considering how face roll some of my decks are, some people might criticize that for, like, simplicity, like, oh, you're doing that because you're just simple-minded and stupid, which partly, when you're playing a game for the first time, maybe that should be the way that you think anyway, but no, part of it is just a preference, too. Like, it, it kind of balances both elements of the game where you have the best of both worlds, where you're kind of mid-range and... You can kind of go in either direction if you want, but it's sort of more satisfying to me, you know, to just play on the board, which over time with these games, nobody ever does because it gets so bloated with all this shit that you have. Yeah, a lot of the blue cards are very poor value. Like they're just, you know, seven mana, five, five or like crazy stuff like that. Even though I like some of the mechanics, or I would call them more like anti-mechanics. Just the fact of, you know, <clears throat> stopping them from doing anything. Stopping them from blocking, stopping them from targeting it. Okay, we've seen this kind of thing before. Now they'll buff this thing up like crazy. A heal buff deck that centers around green cards. What an insult. Right, I get pissed about the white ones that do that, but... And see, of course, I don't have any removal even still, so I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. I'm something of a degenerate buffer myself, but equip human. Of course, this is an intentional synergy by me too. I didn't even know that was going to be a thing. So that subverts the really inefficient cost of it, but it's still not really worth it. I still had to pay three for a mere plus two plus one buff. So I can't do... Man, I'm getting mana screwed even more than usual here. If I could just buff it a little more, right, I could really... I gotta give it like some wind fury type mechanic. I forget what that's called. Just like double strike or something. Uh, where you can attack twice with the same thing. Yeah, I actually don't even know what that mechanic is called in this game. But yeah, if you could buff it and do that. But of course, the fact that they're healing also subverts my, <laughs> my whole strategy here. You'd be surprised how this can actually work sometimes. But it looks kind of pathetic here. Even when I'm not going against white, I still have to fucking see this heal buff shit, or I should do the same thing myself. Right, just have some of these, uh... I forget what they're called, but... Whatever, it, it'll be a card whenever something enters the battlefield, you get one life. Whenever something, whenever you gain life, you get a plus one, plus one counter, all that kind of shit.
Okay, this is perfectly fine. We get two invisible stalkers even. It's just like the pace of these games is somehow too fast. Like it'll ramp up. We need it to just drag out and be sort of slow paced. And then I might be able to actually do anything. But this is, of course, me facing my mortal nemesis, of, you know, of my past self. Using green, but not really. Because I wouldn't use all this kind of heal degenerate shit. Come on, man. Like, you might think, oh, this is such a good card, of course. But if I just had this crazy thing called removal, I'd be able to deal with it just fine. But I just don't. That's why healing and buffing bothers me so much. Because... It'll just stay there forever and there's nothing I can do about it because I can't destroy it on the board like you normally would in a normal card game because you can't target stuff with attacks, right? You can only block, so... There's nothing you can ever do about it. This is a 6-6. Six, six, trample ward beginning of each combat. If it's untapped, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, tap it create a 1-1. One, one. Uh, whatever, I'll just do it. I mean, what, you'll tap one of those and just... I guess you should, because you're not going to lose anything for it. You couldn't block my shit anyway. Look, look at the verbose card text. It's a 4-mana six, 6-6. Six. For green, that would say nothing. Just, you get a 4-mana 6-6. Six, six. Congratulations, you're playing as green. But for blue, it's like, oh my goodness. They get to tap it, and they get to do this, and that, and the other thing. Like, what the fuck? At least it does have some good effects on top of that. I don't really care about trample as much, but... And the 1-1 one, one is actually fine, though. Right, that ends up actually working out better, because I... I guess I could have blocked it with that, but after a while now, those 1-1s one are going to be better than what I have anyway. Uh, it's more important to buff these, but again, what really does me out here is the healing. With respect to... It doesn't matter. It's not like I'm going to attack anyway. So he could be... It's kind of fool's gold. These 1-1s one are more expendable than this guy, so I'd rather you tap it. Right, otherwise just let it sit there and then I'm going to have to block this and just die. Right, give me like a million of these tokens. <sighs> the one thing I like about this game though, or maybe it's partly to the credit of some of these formats, is the fact that I don't see too many of the same decks over and over. I, I was seeing that like at the be beginning a little bit, but for the most part... For the most part, you're in a position where there is a certain amount of variety. Okay, we're going to get destroyed again here. Just remember, I've beaten gold players in this format before. It's just like, even with the same exact deck, right? Maybe even last time, but it's not the majority of times. You don't even have to do any of all this. I mean, maybe you think I have some crazy play up my sleeve, or maybe not. I always suspect that in games like that I'm oh I'm always playing against the bot in any of these games like Hearthstone or PvZ Heroes especially but I just never know right I'm not as good at detecting bot they they seem super obvious in Hearthstone if you're playing against the bot but in this game even if a lot of my opponents are bots I can't even tell really which is kind of a good thing because then it's like it's still enjoyable and I'm still getting my ass beat but that doesn't even matter because that just has more to do with their deck than who's even using it. Or they'll they'll say like, oh, this game's too complicated. The bots couldn't figure it out. <clears throat> yeah, that's the one plus advantage that that game at least had already. Is just that the tutorial wasn't so overlong in a four hour fucking bullshit thing. Which again, it's not even specific to this game. I criticize that in a lot of games. Where it can be like too long before it ever lets you actually play against the player. That's the whole psychological ego appeal of all these kind of games. Is like nobody would enjoy playing them against AI, but everybody likes playing them against players. So, you know, it's it's almost like a trick that it, it shows some sort of internal lacking of so many multiplayer games that they rely on the you know on human opponents to make them interesting for better or for worse. Sit at the table and play with yourself, as Magnus Carlson would say. It's amazing.
Okay, we'll do that anyway, just to give us some time to tap out. See, again, if any of these decks are just sort of slower paced, which some of them actually are, even some really good decks, or they'll hold stuff back, and then they'll realize, oh, it's too late now, I can't do anything about it. And they'll actually still lose. So they kind of get lost in the minutia of their own, you know, meta preconception that they think oh i must be playing a meta deck so they'll hold everything back and then by the time they realize oh now i can't do anything about it and they actually lose to something very shitty and very ordinary right these plays should seem relatively passive and innocuous to them so they shouldn't go out of the way to try to do anything or they might not be able to because again hexproof is about that but all they would need is a simple aoe There should be some sort of rule though, like if I lose five games in a row, now I have to go play the other version. So you could do this, or you could untap that. But this is at least pretty efficient. We just have to get rolling with this amount of damage, and it's not going to take too long to actually finish them off because of that. But now they're going to be really on alert and on guard. See, look how slow this gold rank player is playing compared to the other ones. In before this turn, they summon like five fucking 16-16s like that one guy. Additional cost, sacrifice a green creature, search the library for green card. Again, none of this is going to matter because as long as I can out damage them, right, I don't really care about this, but. <clears throat> as long as it doesn't have reach or flying or anything. You would think giants would be a pretty good candidate though to have reach because they're so tall, right? That's the whole idea. It's like usually spiders that have it. Whether it's to imply that they're spitting a web and shooting you down, or whether it's to imply that they're using their long legs to do it, I don't even know. Um, well this would be pretty worth it too, so I'm still at a decent head start of damage, but it might just not quite be enough. Right, because I'm not going to be blocking anything they're doing, so I pretty much have to end it like this turn, which I almost could do. Right, you'll have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 just from that alone, and I might get some other buff too. Right, so that's what it could come down to. No matter how good their board is, as long as they can't block, I just win. This is how simple and stupid it can be. So I'll lose to these bronze rank players, but now I'll beat a gold player somehow. It doesn't matter, because if you can't do it this turn, right? You have to finish me off this turn, or you have to at least stop one of my fucking things. Which you might be able to do, or you'll heal for like some stupid reason. None of this might make a difference. This guy is like me. He has actual good strong minions on the board, although maybe a few too many little weeny ones too, but no matter how much of this you do, this is the whole hilarity of it. I should still win because you might not have any removal or you might not... You might not have anything you can actually still do about it. You had no removal and nothing that can actually block something with flying. So imagine losing in that condition. Like, regardless of what happens in the rest of this match, isn't that one of the biggest clown things ever? Like, you might think, oh no, that's just a basic normal part of a card game. But imagine being that vulnerable, like, with the kind of crazy decks that these people are using. This is what I mean. And of course, if I didn't win that exact turn, I'm never going to win. So my decks aren't even... This deck isn't even, like, aggro. It's just more like... You know unmitigatable damage and apparently this guy has trouble dealing with that because you know he didn't have anything they could deal with flying so of course that validates the deck so well because if you can beat a gold player with it i doubt i'll actually beat this game but that makes no sense at all because you never know what exactly they're using but it's like Presumably, it's really good and capable of, you know, stacking up against some of those crazy decks like we, what we just saw. But it's more so just the pace of it that I have to deal with. If I can just get off to a good start like that with a couple buffs and a couple unpreventable things. 
Of course, now he'll have the perfect answer to this flying stuff. Okay, so we'll go into here, do the invisible stalker, and part of it is you just have to get some buffs off pretty quickly. <clears throat> and I don't have to worry about that. Or like their hand is already empty. Like what kind of clown deck is this guy using? He could be doing some sort of troll challenge, like try to win in this format with like fucking some shitty deck, but that's kind of what I'm always doing anyway. You can't worry you can't deal with that, but you can deal with my flying stuff, but you can't really kill it. You can just you know survive it for now, which could be annoying. But I do have to buff this. Okay, the life doesn't really matter. No, their deck might be actually as shitty as mine. Like they have some probable win condition later, but um This is always a pretty good synergy actually, but it's not like something I actually intended. Why was it not working there? You could even hear the interaction of me trying to click it, but it just wouldn't register. But no, pretty much the only thing this game has, the online doesn't, is uh, music, right? That has sound and everything too, but... Um, flying is fine. Or no, I still can't even do it. Or wait. Okay, this is fine. So they're playing so slow that I would actually have a chance to beat them. It just makes me wonder, how the fuck did you get to gold in Timeless with this kind of deck that you're using? And I don't understand at all. Like, look how easy and comfortable it is for me, even if no matter what happens from now, it's just like... You will at least have to sack it. One of those stupid reach. What what could you do with this one last card in this one last turn? How come their deck is so much more suited to deal with it now? The first game they had nothing. What did they do? It's like sideboard or something where they fucking... You know, pulled out a bunch of reach counter flying stuff. You should be pretty much dead if I'm not mistaken. What kind of garbage matchup with this, dude? It's not even satisfying. That would almost make it seem like, oh shit. Now I'm gonna be made to eat my words with this last turn. Exactly as planned. This game had a lot of moments like that, actually, where I, it would seem like I'm one turn away from winning, but then they'd, you know, they'd go from 100 to zero and beat me. Like in this exact moment. Now they'll do some crazy infinite loop combo and actually OTK me. Yeah, either that's a bot, or it's just a player using a shitty, shitty deck, but I'll still take it. I guess the ranks are just kind of deceptive, but explain to me how that guy got that far with the shitty deck that he's using. Which is the same thing you'll ask about me if I get anywhere with this. And of course, daily quests are designed almost to punish a player like me who plays the game like once a week. You know, who are these people who are playing the game every single day? It's a, you know, psychological insidious technique to try to get you addicted to the game. Like, what if you work all week and you don't have time and then you play it on the weekend, right? The, the guy who, who plays it on Saturday, Sunday, because they're off, let's say, and then they play it for like 10 hours each day to make up for how much they didn't play it during the week, even to try to catch up, but they can't because now they miss out on the daily quest too. And they're trying to play it as a free to play player or something, you know, it's just something that feels wrong because you're just punishing somebody for not even not playing enough. Yeah, I could play, you could play one hour every day and do the daily quest. So you play in a week, seven hours, or you could play on the weekend, four hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday, right? So you're playing, both people are playing seven hours in the week, hypothetically, but one of them is doing all the daily quests and one of them can't because, you know, they're just playing them on the wrong days or they're playing them kind of all at once. So there's nothing good about daily quests. It's just a sense of, you know, subliminal, almost conditioning you to play the game every day. <sighs> so I'm not even that satisfied by having beaten that guy because his deck seems so utterly shitty that I almost can't even believe. I don't even get it. Uh... 
Okay, that's fine, that's fine. But you want something you can actually play with it. But now I won't get lands. Like, it's w one way or the other that you get screwed. For fuck's sake, I did all that for a fucking arm guard familiar. Plus two, plus three, and has flying with us a fucking five cost card. Like, what logic does a card like that even make? And it's like, for five mana, you could probably summon something with three attack and flying already. I mean, I guess you could say you'll give it to something really good, like... I'd give it to one of my fucking dinosaurs with 12-12 or something, but... It's so overly expensive. Like, either one of those cards should only cost like one or two or three. Like, give something plus three, plus three. That's not a big deal. Give something flying. That's also not a big deal. But somehow... It's costing the absolute max that you could possibly imagine. This is that Nico Bolas guy right from the tutorial. That's one thing that I'm finding with my YouTube, anything I put on YouTube, people are so overly defensive of certain games. Even if it's a game that I like and I play for a long time, like whether it be this or whether it be uh, like chess or something. But if you criticize it in any way, people get so mad about it. It's like you can still be objective about it. And then they'll attack you or like, oh, you're a hater of the game or something. But also, I played the game, you know, for two years, right? You know, I'm still playing it to this day and I love the game. But they'll just get like overly... Those are the two things I seem to trigger in people. Because of my adherence to like playing a game completely blind, there'll be a lot of hindsight bias that people get pissed about. Like, oh, haha, ha, look at me. I'm better at the game than you. Just because I played it for longer, I've looked stuff up or things like that. Right, so that'll piss people off. Like, oh, you're playing it wrong on your first time ever playing it, playing it completely blind. And then the other thing is just like... Basically, you know, people getting triggered by you, you criticizing a game in any way, like even in a small, minor, specific way. And then, oh, they'll get mad and overly defensive and, you know... You should just be blind and just like, you know, pretend like it's perfect in every way and not even question anything about it. Or, or there's like an opposite interpretation element with that too, with respect to, you know, something that you like the most, you should be most critical of because you're holding it to a high standard because you want to see it, better, see it get better and see it improve instead of being compla complacent about it. And then the other element is the fact that A lot of what people will do is they'll like dislike something or they'll they'll just dismiss it, right? Like use ad hominem or some sort of label or just say, oh wow, this is so dumb. But they won't actually explain it or give a proper rebuttal to it. So it's easy to do that, right? They'll just sort of mindlessly, this is like my psychology thing that almost like I maybe do it on purpose. I sort of bait people. Like I know that people would dislike something that I say, but it's still perfectly valid and they don't actually have a rebuttal for it, but they'll still dislike it. So the, the one thing that they know is that they disagree and they don't like the take or the thing, right? But they don't actually know how come or they can't explain it or they can't actually make a proper rebuttal to it. They'll just dismiss it and that's it. It's like some sort of a uh, closed structure contrivance where it's sort of like, what do you call it? Like you have a certain viewpoint so strongly and like almost religion, Let, let's use that. The fact that the reason why you can't think about it is, oh, because it's blasphemous, or you can't ask questions, or you'll, you know, whatever, right? There, there's some sort of uh, innate structure to it that you can't question it. But the reason why you can't do that isn't because, oh, it's so absolute and so unquestionable. It's because if you did, then you would invalidate it very easily. So they have to protect itself against that. So a truly absolute structure wouldn't be that, oh, it's unquestionable. It's that you'd be able to question it as much as you want, and it would still hold up to such scrutiny in the first place. Right, not that its whole alliance and sort of uh, foundation would rely on the fact of not being held accountable in the first place. Sort of bypassing it. Also, another mechanic I haven't used much ever in this game is all these stupid companion things. Which I don't even fully understand how they really work. Look at how unlucky I'm getting in some of these games. Like, you can say my deck is bad, but I'm getting mana screwed, land screwed, everything. Just 
how is it possible that I never get anything on a decent curve? Yeah, some of these cards are really shitty value, but something does seem weird with that. I have like 20 out of 60 cards in my deck or lands. I have enough low cost cards to at least be able to play some. And I rely obviously on getting it on a good curve sort of early because, you know, as the game drags on, I'm not going to have any late game value to match what people are doing. And even if I do in some of my decks, they're not going to be typically, you know, I might summon a good statted minion, but it's not going to have effects then to live up to what my opponent is doing either. It's just like very simple and single minded. <laughs> Like, the likelihood of me winning this game is pretty much zero, but they always get low on health, and it's a lot of it is their own doing, <laughs> right? It's kind of surprising that, like, how the fuck is he even a 9 health? I haven't done that much to him. Or that actually had voice acting to it. Or what was it? Was it maybe the goblin? That little snarky laugh. Yeah, it sounded more like that than a, than a female voice. He's playing right into my hands to allow uh, to allow me, him to get me so low, or me to get him so low. <clears throat> like whatever chance I would have had is evaporated. That's why it's called water. That's why it's blue, right? Because your your chances of winning are evaporated. But it's just like. Whatever chance I would have had would have taken way too long. Or that is satisfying at least to see. Right, that's like the Trogzor interaction, like where they try to target it with the spell, and then the spell gets sucked up by the spell banner. So they try to use removal on something, and not only do they not get to use it, because it gets deflected and absorbed and countered by something else, but then you still get the benefit of them having played the spell, which is to summon the 3-5 Trog, right, from Trogzor 2. So they're getting punished for it, but they're not even getting the benefit from doing it in the first place. My favorite way to enter as an alliance player attacking the Undercity is through the sewers. Like entering Orgrimmar from the the bridge in the Barrens, right? And the, kind of going through the back door. Okay, this turn was obviously very impactful of theirs, and there's not much we can do about it. These are the kind of turns that you'd never see me make with most of the decks that I use. And often by choice. It's not that I don't have like a good enough question to do some of this. It's just like these crazy things where you do like a million things in one turn. Or I guess some of that I do still have the ability to do like Galta, the Stampede Tyrant, where the power creep will kind of do it for you. Those are kind of the three phases of a card game. Like in the early days, nobody has those plays overall because there aren't any. Then in the middle days, it'll be like you have to do it, but you have to work for it. Right, where you have to work for some combo to do a crazy play where you either do an OTK or you fill up the board or, you know, whatever. Do, like, a crazy combo. And then in the later days, it's like you get those crazy combos for no work at all. Like, in Synchro Summoning in Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! It's turn one and you already get the benefit. It's like almost the the game sort of rewarding you, like just because you're stupid enough to play the game or spend money on it or buy the newest cards, you're getting rewarded for that alone. Rather than getting rewarded for your play in the course of the game and getting stuff to stick on the board and getting, you know, actual combo play to pay off, no, you're getting rewarded for simply playing the game or simply having the cards in the first place. So for no work at all on turn one, you're already getting rewarded. Right, you don't have to get it to stick, you don't have to tribute it, you don't have to combine it with something, you don't have to do anything. These people are so slow even when it's such a foregone conclusion that they're gonna win. But see, I'm still satisfied because I got them to make that one clown play where they tried they tried to remove something, but it was absorbed by the ward or whatever. Damn, that looks pretty sick. Minus X minus X for X is your life total. I mean that always gives them an incentive to do that, but it's also very dangerous. Like if I just had a little better buff here, give it plus six plus six, or give it wind fury or something. Plus two plus two and wind fury. Yeah, what, what is that mechanic called even? Just like double strike, I think. I've used it so infrequently that... There's got to be a buff that just like gives something double strike. <clears throat> I 
is look look how low I still got him. That makes it feel like somewhat of a successful venture. Just the fact that you know I get him to like five health, even though he's mostly doing it to himself. At least there he had sort of a synergy for it that made it make sense of why he would want to do that. <clears throat> but a lot of these people let themselves get a lot lower than what you would expect. If I just got off to a decent start, that's all these decks really require, but it just never happens. Not that I'm really vouching for this being my type of deck anyway. It's really not. I guess I can keep it just for that. Like, think about how simple it would be. I could kill you in 10 turns with this if you just don't do anything about it, right? It would be just that simple. And it seems unlikely that they would allow that to happen and not have removal for it and not have healing or other things but or that they would not out damage you in the process but somehow that just happens sometimes like against that green clown guy almost as big of a green clown as me just remember i did get to platinum with my shitty fucking green deck recipes that i would use in the past not like a recipe that the game gives you like one of these structured decks, but one that I would just use. Or, you know, that's a format that these games always need. Is like a structured deck format where it's kind of like... Ironic that the planes have to do with flying so much, right? It's, it's, it should be something up in the sky as the land. Just how, like, the island doesn't make sense that, oh, it's... It's... How can there be a water land? But... No, it's like you would do it in such a way that you would have like a deck recipe, right? Like a list of deck recipes, but you would kind of do it in such a way that uh, you could only use the recipes against each other, like the theme deck format in, in Pokemon. So everybody uses one of those decks, but you have to use them against each other. So at least it feels kind of balanced because everybody can use the same ones and you can only use out of the same set. Like there might be a lot of them to choose between, but... There's only so many that you're going to have, and so it's kind of still a fixed set thing. <clears throat> but no, I couldn't even do a draft in that one, so I'd have to work up to saving up some points to be able to even unlock it. Now, we don't actually have anything that has flying, so it's kind of a waste. No flying, no invisible stalker. Like, whenever we get invisible stalker out there, we always win because, well, we at least have a much better chance because it's just going to kind of chip away over the course of a game. Yeah, I got to look up like some sort of buff that maybe gives something double strike. But now it's going to be some other different color that we're not necessarily going to do anything about. Yeah, see, even here, we, we take the time to do the voice acting for the pet, but not for the actual... Not for the actual fucking avatars and stuff like that. Everything besides the avatar gets it. Right, like the cards will even sometimes have sound effects to them. The pets will have it. The Planeswalkers will have it, but not the fucking hero itself. That you pay $14.99 for this fucking seemingly starter one that you use like in the tutorial. That should be like a default avatar that nobody even wants to use. That they almost punish you for using. Then thereby encouraging you to buy other ones so that you actually have a sense of personality to them. But no, this one you actually have to pay real money for. I wouldn't mind paying like 10k gold or something for it, but... You can't even buy it. You have to only buy it with real money. We're still getting them decently low, but the problem is I'm just too low myself to do anything about it. Or that could be like one final clutch unexpected play that you can equip that to something too. That's kind of what I like sometimes too, is you can throw people off because they're expecting you to be using something meta. So because you're not, then they'll, you know, they won't expect it and then it'll, it'll completely just catch them off guard and ruin them. So in other words, you're winning not because your deck is so good, but because it's so bad that they don't ha know how to deal with it, or they're not used to it. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I should count. How many cards do I actually have in this game? And I'll sort of compare the two collections. 
based on like how much you start with an online versus how much you have here over the course of playing for actually a decent period of time even though a lot of what i've spent my gold on haven't been packed so it's not like i built this optimally for the number of cards or even for the for the number of uh things that i've crafted well what i've crafted is still a net positive of cards right the number that you would have would still be the same they just wouldn't be the optimal ones like i just crafted whatever the hell i felt like so let's see how, how would we even count this i don't think it tells you anywhere specifically where right you would just have to probably count it the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so 12, 24, 30, oh, am I really going to have to do it like this? Or I'll just count the number of pages and then just do it at the end. So you have 6, 12, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90. 1, 2, 3, so like, well, 193 basically. I'm sure I counted that slightly wrong, and I'm also sure that there's probably some easier way to say that, but 193 times 12, let's just estimate we have about 2300 cards in this game and then i'll compare it to the other one here but this game even does have music i missed it like i wanted to show it as soon as you come in let, let me open it again it had like a little theme that it played at the beginning so it's like from 1995 it's showing but that must just be when the game itself came out see it actually does have music so you're not missing out on anything by playing this version but no i'm not going to make a full transition to playing it but i might just play like one game or just show it off kind of here and there because oh shit i forgot my password now it probably has some stupid requirement of like that's why it's impossible to remember your passwords because even if you try to make it the same one it'll be like you know a different criteria you have to have capital letters you have to have special characters blah 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 for each possible thing so Okay, here we go. Biggest events this week, and of course I have to use display capture for this, or at least I think I do. Yeah, what I love about this is I don't even have to change my category, because I can just... You know, there isn't another one, which is so weird. No no other game series is really like that, where there's so many different games in it. E even there's single-player ones, you would just use the same one, Magic the Gathering, just period, for all of them. Which you might think that's a good thing, but it's actually bad, because it shows you they're trying to inflate their total. Because apparently, maybe this thing doesn't do that well on the on Twitch. Like, why should this game collectively, between this version and Arena and real life events and everything else, have less viewers than fucking Hearthstone does in this day and age? So, if we look at the collection, I think it just tells you a raw number here. Right, you have 2230 cards. So, I have almost as many cards, pretty much the same exact amount, in this one on day two of playing as I do in that after like two years of or like a year and a half of playing. So what might be the case is it might be more difficult to get the cards because I don't see anything. I don't see anything that you can do. I can't use the trade mechanic yet. There's nothing to actually buy here in this at all, which I don't really even understand that. So let me actually just play a game just for the fuck of it. Um, like there's a best of one maybe that you can do. 
And of course, these, these are kind of like an unranked mode, basically, but let's see if anybody's even doing it. Guardsman full, legacy, open play, best of 160 minutes, nobody's playing there. Um... Yeah, a lot of the cards are going to be different, but it seems like it has, like, brand new cards even in here, right, with respect to, like, there were some that we got from Caverns of Zixalon and stuff that was relatively recent. But what we don't have in Arena is probably some of these cards that are a lot older. March of the Machine. Like, I'd almost want to see it from, uh, oldest expansion, right? When it came out. I don't know how exactly you organize it like that. Format. Got to be legacy, vintage, rarity. There is nothing that's even going to sort of buy that because nobody would even want to see that, right? Nobody would even care about that. That, I guess, would be it, probably. Promotional cards, and then this... Let's say this will be the newest one, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. But this might tell you here. So I'd want to build mostly with the cards that are old as possible. Scars of Mirrodin. So for example, could we Blight Mamba? Kobe reference. But no, it's like, uh, were some of these gate crash? Like, are some of these in the thing? In Arena? Because I feel like there wouldn't be. Cons of Tarkir, I feel like, has been referenced there. Of course, I don't have a lot of cards, but some of these Guilds of Ravincia, Crimson Vow. I feel like a lot of these are in there, though, anyway. So what would really be missing out? Promotional cards, Mirage, Weatherlight, Exodus. Like, there, there are going to be a lot of things in here that we're missing out on, but that, like, we don't have. But I feel like a lot of these aren't in there. Shadow Moor. Right, this, this will have the oldest cards, I guess, in the history of the game from the really early on, which will be really garbage and nobody will be using them, but I guess legacy formats is meant for that exactly. So let's see if we can't find a game. There aren't too many people playing right now, or at least not in this exact mode, but this seems like the only mode that I really can play because you have to, you know. I kind of just wanted to do one just for the sake of it. So I should end off every Magic episode by, you know, just playing one game in here. Or one set, or whatever. Or everybody's gonna be a tryhard. Like, I was getting my ass beat in all those games anyway, yesterday, but- Or not yesterday, the day before. But it doesn't even really matter. Or like, I'll just watch somebody play. Psych MTG. Or you can't even use the chat properly, it's kind of just like... You just get to watch, and it just says stuff automatically, right? I thought you'd be able to type shit and all. Yeah, you have to manually, like, keep clicking this thing and everything. How do I actually leave the game now if I'm... Oh, it just opens it, like, in a separate window there. This could be one problem with this. The game's not just going to be super active, and you might say, Oh, just play some other thing. Right, play some other format, but I can't because you need to buy into each of these with like in-game things, and I don't even know how to how to get them aside from maybe buying the one fucking starter pack that you get, right? The starter bundle, but what about just earning them some other way, or what about just buying cards and buying packs with the in-game currency that you get? And I'm not even really getting any, anything from this, like whether I win or lose this, I don't think I'm even getting any currency, or it's not even showing me what currency I do have. With respect to like, you know, it's not showing me uh, I'm getting play points or blah, 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 this and that. Or no, it was showing it actually in the collection, I guess. We have 18 new player points and nothing else. So what the fuck am I supposed to even do with those? And I like bought into something with them, right? But I don't even know how to play it now. Like this, play a match, but then I couldn't find a queue. So maybe this game isn't as active as it should be. That's maybe the one problem with it. Or maybe just Arena has a lot of bots that make it seem more inflated activity than it actually is. Uh, let's see if somebody actually joins this. Clock 15 minutes. Yeah, just for the insidious tendency of the daily quest that even I was just talking about, I would feel compelled to play that rather than this. Or just because you can actually fucking find games. And I don't know even exactly. Oh, it'll say it here. Sometimes it'll just say what it says there. Like, I'm going to click for more details with a question mark. Um, the sets that are 
of cards that are legal for play in a particular game. See the ban list for exceptions. Format may all, or is just telling you what a format is overall, so it still won't tell you exactly what that is. Leave event, leave match. Why is nobody even playing in best of one? And I love how long that is as a fucking thing. You get 60 minutes for that? <sighs> Maybe this is just an early odd time to actually play it. But no, this could go on for like fucking 75 minutes or even longer, like 150, because each player gets 25 per thing. Damn it. I didn't think it'd be this hard to find a game. Well, now I'll spend as much time waiting for a game in here as I did playing that overall. Let's just wait and see if we can't find it. And I'm just going to get my ass beat, obviously, like I was doing even there, but I did beat a gold ranked player in Timeless somehow. Like, whatever I'm using is even just garbage. I'm just having withdrawal to play as green, so I, I find a way to do it even in some other game when I'm not allowing it in Arena. Like, we could wait till one of these are done, and then they might queue up for another one, but how can that be that there's only four games being played, period? Or I guess you could look in, you know one of these will be much more active so maybe people just don't like legacy stuff and whatever i'd be using here i wouldn't even know i guess that's what i'm sort of maybe neglecting to show okay let's just do this one it is showing it right or some people will uh Would you like to play first? Sure. You have to interact with this thing, which some people might find kind of annoying. Whatever I have, kind of, I can just keep. But the best thing I'm happiest about is the fact that it is automated, as much as I'm not, like, an much of an expert on the game, obviously. You can't do anything else. Just end the turn. Or you don't even have to really interact with the bottom. It'll just kind of automatically advance it. But no, sometimes people would be sort of intolerant in these kind of games where... You know, oh, if you don't really know what you're doing, they'll just quit out. That would happen sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, just... Whatever. You, you would have to know the interactions because you have to do everything manually. Uh, that keeps blocking my shit here. Of course, what people are using is going to be a lot better than mine, but at least these might be a lot older cards, like... Because the legacy might mean you can use older cards, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily that you have to use older cards which means that you could use new ones mixed in with that free combat phase activate abilities play lands let's just play that stupid spider here and you have to manually do that too but that's okay or you can activate something that'll automatically give you the mana that is kind of satisfying to have to manually do that you know this simulates this is like playing over the board chess or something like how i was trying to do using a webcam even if it's against myself but it's like this will simulate what it would be like in a tournament environment where you actually have to touch the lands to show it and all that kind of stuff you have to you know declare the attack by pushing this to the side putting it sideways so you learn like maybe the real life tournament etiquette Instead of just being an entitled clown who gets everything done for them by the game. Which even still here you do get a lot of it done. So a lot, a lot of this is just going to be random stuff that I obviously... I, I just kind of made this like super low cost of a deck just so I could actually play things. Because I was having trouble doing that and getting mana screwed anyway. Or now this is going to be best of three, isn't it? Because <clears throat> nobody was wanting to play the best of one, but I guess just based on the amount of time people could take, like, nobody's actually taking that long, right? 75 minutes or 25 minutes, you know, actually flagging on the clock. You have a three cost thing, let's do that one. That touch, add one man of any color, which is actually good, but it doesn't really matter because I don't have anything that high cost anyway. Declare attackers, it's a three, two. I guess I won't even bother, but we do have that, that touch potentially to block. For some reason, I don't remember even, like, blocking anything the whole time. Maybe just because I couldn't play anything in the first, those first couple games, just because it was, like, everything was way too high cost, and I underestimated how much I was going to get mana screwed. I'm at stab. Declare attackers. Are you even going to have the balls to attack? No. 
we need to have that turtle in here to actually force some combat to happen. So three mana, just go with that. I'm just playing on curve, go like this. They don't seem to be doing anything really too crazy. We have a couple good death touch things in here. Place your triggered abilities onto the stack. Um, I don't know actually how to do that mechanic. Okay. I don't really care. What, what did that even do? Or it won't even tell you in some cases what they do. Right, it's, it's not as maybe user-friendly as Arena where it'll explain the mechanic. Here it'll just tell you the mechanic. The backup one. Undo, concede game, turn off auto yield, yield through this turn, no possible play yield all. Or like that's a sort of a bait thing too. If it automatically advances, that means that they know that you didn't have a play to potentially even make. So you can kind of bluff having a play. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, that would be a big thing. They would know you don't have a trap card if it happened automatically. But if it doesn't happen automatically, then they could think that you just declined to play the trap card. Not that, you know, like it, in certain versions, it would ask you at the end of every interaction, like, do you want to activate your trap card? Do you want to activate your trap card? So if it doesn't ask you, you know they don't have something they could potentially activate. But that's not fair because in a real life setting, you would never know that. It would be up to them whether they want to reveal whether they had one to play or not. Right. So there's some kind of hotkey that you can bluff with an arena too like that where like you can bluff having a play uh by hit holding down like alt or control or something stupid like that the game has ended i win the match why i wasn't even doing it doing anything or does that mean we get to he just quit out of the game, I guess, overall. Well, I guess that counts as a game. So is that, like, the first game that I've ever won? It wasn't even me, like, BMing them or, like, being super slow. I think it was still their turn. Okay, see you tomorrow.